Well, good morning. It's time for our book review. Well, we have two channels. One is an adult side, and this is a book that has to be told on the adult side. It's called Resistance by Halleck Kohansky. The Underground War Against Hitler, 1939 to 1945. A wonderful, wonderful story, but horrendous, horrendous facts. It's the, well, because we're here at zero, I can say it's these bastards caused it. Not the resistance, Hitler and the Nazis. Not good people. Anyways, it's a really thick book, and it took me a long time to read this. Just because I, well, I had to read it all. I mean, but you get the facts out of this one. If you if you want facts, well, it is published by L Live Right Publishing, a division of W. W. Norton and Company, and Halleck Kochansky. There she is. Boy, I bet she had a real job. She's a British historian, a fellow of the Royal Historical Society. She has taught history at several universities and the author of Eagle Unbowed, Poland and the Poles in the Second World War. She lives in England. She's probably Polish, isn't Wow. Well, to resist, therefore, but how, when, and where. There are, were no laws, no guidelines. No precedence to show the way. That was by the Dutch resistor, Hermann Friedhoff. In every country that fell to the Third Reich during the Second World War, from France to the, in the West to parts of the Soviet Union in the East, a resistance movement against Nazi domination emerged. And every country that endured occupation created its own fiercely nationalistic account of the role of homegrown resistance in its eventual liberation. How Halleck Kohansky panoramic prodigiously researched work is a major achievement. The first book to strip these national histories of myth and to integrate them into a definitive chronicle of the underground war against the Nazis. It really is a, 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 a fantastic. Bringing to light many powerful and little known stories, resistance shows how small bands of individuals took actions that could not that could lead not merely to their own deaths, but to the liquidation of their families and entire communities. Those were called reprisals. Oh, as Kohan. Kochansky demonstrates most were joined up, who joined up were not supermen and, and superwomen, but ordinary people drawn from all walks of life who would not have been expected, least of all by themselves, to become heroes of any kind. Kochansky covers the sheer variety of resistance activities from the clandestine press, assistance to allied servicemen evading capture, and the provision of intelligence to the Allies to the more violent manifestations of resistance through sabotage and armed insurrection. For many people, resistance was not an occupation nor an identity, but an activity. A person could deliver a cache of stolen documents to armed partisans and then seamlessly return to their normal life, as if war, life in wartime is normal. Huh. <laughs> For Jews under Nazi rule, meanwhile, the stakes were life and death. Resistance was less about national uh, restoration than about mere survival. Why resist at all? Who is the real enemy? What kind of failure futures are we risking for ourselves? Such questions animated those who resisted. With penetrating insight, Kochansky 
reveals the single quality that defined resistance across the board he was resilience. Despite the constant arrest and executions, resistance movements rebuilt themselves time and time again. A landmark history that will endure for decade, decades to come, resistance forces every reader to ask themselves a question distinct to our own time. What would I have done? Well, the secret is keep resisting. <laughs> it's, uh, oh. There's, there's maps in here, and uh, there are a few photos uh, towards the back. Let's see. It's, let me show Pétain. He was the Vichy government in France, and they were collaborators. He was tried. Uh, him and de Gaulle did not get along. De Gaulle was free. So a lot of the... the Governments, they're called governments and exiles, actually had to go or did go to France. There's a few probably went to uh, Egypt and all of that also, but but they hung out and send radio messages. And the radio was a very, uh, uh, what do you call it? SOS signals and all. I mean, the uh, Morse code was the uh, principal conduit by which they got a hold of because without radios they couldn't communicate very effectively. It'd take too long to curry these messages. But uh, it was something else. Anyways, uh, a lot of the governments and exiles did uh, 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 send messages to their uh, specific groups. Now every chapter or every place in here usually has the feel like the Holocaust, the Christian response. That was one of the chapters. Every different uh, nationality is uh, covered in this book. Like, well, they go through the French, the Dutch, the D Danish, uh, the Balkans, and all of those. And then the next chapter, uh, the Germans hit back. They talk about it, what they did in every different country. So it's really concise, and a lot of un unknown data has come out because of this. And, uh, she does talk about like the Brit. Some of the British writers wrote after, and a lot of people wrote their memoirs and things after the after the war. And so they mostly talked uh, what was important to them or that they knew about. So she tried to uh, go across the whole gamut of it and and fill in some of the blanks and and. Uh, she found a lot of old articles and and a lot of contradictions too, you know. <laughs> so they showed the uh, Germans in Prague. Here's a woman, a uh, 25-year-old Belgian woman, Mira, Mira uh, Andre de Gaulle, who saved the lives of many British airmen and, and, and soldiers. So a lot of people hid people out. A lot of people hid Jewish people. And uh, the free press did, but they, they were ruthless on the press because the press, like we, are free and independent. And they said what they want, but they died. Many of them were killed. And uh, it's just horrendous. So as a journalist, uh, I know what I would be doing. Oh, and there she is. We have done a, a talk about Virginia Hall. She had a, uh, artificial or a, a artificial limb or a lower part of her leg that was missing. So, and I, I she had a name for it. I, I forgot right now. But she walked across the Pyrenees into into Spain. Uh they did assassinate Heinrich, Heydrich, but 
the reprisals on that, they killed thousands of people just for shooting one German. So they said no more political assassinations. So they did a lot. Of, some of the sabotage, uh, like gone east into Germany and I mean into Russia and Soviet Union, they they destroyed like 1,200 locomotives. And, but the Germans uh, fixed the rails pretty quick, you know, and they downplayed the role to a lot of the government said, well, they didn't help that much. And, and really the resistant people were supposed to be secret armies that rose up and stuff. But right in the end, when the Allies were nearby and were on the move, a lot of times partisans and resistance movements took over their uh, respective towns and, and governments and, and were running and kept the power from being blown up, you know, like power stations and all, because the Germans did some nasty, those bastards did real nasty stuff in the end as they left. And, of course, they executed a lot of people in the, in the prisons and all. So they cover everybody. Uh, Draza Mihalovic. And then these people were nationalistic. But people like Tito was all just, just for communism. And that's all they did is they, they fought a lot of these partisan groups. Mentioned that they were nationalities that wanted their way. And they even fought and... Uh, even some of them were turned over to the Germans to go get those guys because they wanted them out of the way so that they could have their own total, like Tito wanted, all of Yugoslavia. And Yugoslavia was the modern uh, states of Croatia, Serbia, Herzegovina, Kos Kosovo, uh, Albania, Montenegro, were all tried to be rolled up into one uh, one region and that didn't fly so a lot of the modern things that have happened in like 1990 were the uh, cause of, of people like Tito and all that so communism's no better and it, and uh, it really was just a shove their way and they became dominant and brutal too after they got in that's what's called the Iron Curtain so, you know, I can go on and on. This book is just, I've already spent 12 minutes, and so I hope that you learn some lesson, because I learned something, and uh, don't let it happen to us, folks. It could happen. It could happen, except that we have a new threat from another direction. I'm not going to rant and rave, but Zero Channel has got to be some of these issues, and I hope that you get the book. Now, we got this at the Tucson Public Pima County Library here in Tucson. And uh, this is a, a good reference book to keep on. If you want some concise and, and uh, well, I'm not saying a wonderful history, but a wonderfully well-written book about the history that's uh, pretty inclusive, then get this book. Thank you for watching Carrie's ETV and keep the faith. Goodbye from Carrie's ETV.